Oh, dear professors, dear colleagues, dear students, dear doctors, um, we welcome you at our second setting at our April issue of ICERN Web Library of Neuropsychiatry. Uh, today's topic is bipolar disorder and we will talk about what do we know about the mixed state and we are welcome uh, Professor Giuseppe Tavarmina, and we also will be talking about digital mental health technologies which we can use and uh, Associate Professor Alexei Pavlichenko will deliver this very interesting lecture. So it's my pleasure and honor today to introduce Professor Giuseppe Tavarmina, who is the General Secretary of European Depression Association, who is the president of Psychiatric Studies Center and senior research fellow in the Association of the University of Cambridge in United Kingdom. And Professor Giuseppe Tavarmina will be talking about bipolar disorder and mixed states. You are very welcome to the stage, dear Professor Tavarmina. Thanks, Daria. Thanks so much, Daria. Let me share the screen mm. Echo. okay thanks so much daria um, and uh, i'm uh, honored to take part uh, to this interesting sequence of uh, congresses uh, and presentations organized by the International Center for Education and Research in Neuropsychiatry. And I really am honored to take part. My um, presentation will focus on the mixed states and the notion of the mixity. But first, let me remember Professor Akilka, the most prominent conceptualizer of bipolar disorder in the world. A few months ago, he passed away. I feel obliged to thank Professor Akilka for everything he did in the field of a bipolar mood disorder, for everything he gave to all us psychiatrists, and for everything he gave to me as professional level. He also participated as honorary president at the first three of my congresses organized in ISEO in 2003, 2005, 2009. And the picture you can find uh, from the last his participation in ISEO congresses. I say now to him, they are Agop, thanks for everything. Usually who follows my presentation, hello, across the, the countries in Europe, usually this is the first slide I present to talk on bipolar mood disorder, because this is the basic slide to catch uh, our um, evaluation on the, what means the instability of the mood. The depressive episode is only one phase of a broader bipolar spectrum of mood in which the instability of the mood is the main component. So that the major depression, so-called major depression, is not another illness. It is the phase of the fluctuation of the instability as the wave of the sea, the instability of the mood, in which this line, yellow line you can find the picture, describe the modality in which the mood can go down in the depression phase, go up in the hypomania, hyperthymic phase, and go also with the black line describing the tension, the uh, restlessness, the agitation, describing the mixity and the mixed states of the mood. Agu Pakiskal presented in 1999 is perfect scheme of all bipolar disorder. This is perfect 
probably a bit complex for the clinician so that I revisited this scheme to make it more usable and easy for all clinicians. In this scheme, I put all kinds of bipolarity mood disorder, all kinds of mood disorder, except then PTSD and except then maladjustment stressful disorder. I put inside, from one side, the acute mania, and in the opposite side, the unipolar depression. Inside, between one another, all modality of instability, in which you can find the bipolar one, bipolar two, the psychotamia, the temperament, because even if sub threshold, but the temperament are the first steps of the bipolarity. And of, of course, they written in dark yellow, the mixed states, the irritable psychotamia, mixed dysphoria, and agitated depression. On the left, uh, oh, sorry, on the right of the uh, white arrow, you can find the possibility evolutivity of this illness in nat natural or iatrogenic evolutivity. I talked about the temperance. Why? Because they are subthreshold, subclinical forms of the bipolar spectrum. And they are continuous kind of a presentation of the character's mood peculiarities. It's important to catch early for the clinician the temperament because starting from the temperament, we can understand better the modality of evolution of the bipolarity. We know that depressive, hyperchemic, and cyclotemic irritable temperament. I divided the temperament in three groups, even if uh, several in scientific literature describe and divided them in five subgroups. I divide them in only three groups because the cyclotemic irritable and anxious in my clinician experience is the one group similarity because the common part is the instability, uh, the agitation common to the cyclotemic, irritable, and the anxious temperament. The depressive temperament, we know the patient presenting gloomy, humorless, or incapable of fun, given to worry or pessimistic cognition, introvert, depressive, lethargic, habitually long sleeper, preoccupied with inadequacy, failure, or negative events, skeptical, self critical, over critical. In the opposite, the hyper temperament is cheerful, over optimistic, or exuberant, with mental overactivity, or over tactative warm people people seeking extroverted overconfident or grandiose habitually short slippery including in the holidays with high energy level fluval planes over involved the uninhibited stimulus seeking the cyclotemic irritable what's the difference this is a biphasic dysregulation characterized by slight and directive shifts from one phase to the other each phase, fasting for a few days at a time with infrequent teutemia. Common symptoms are mental overactivity, always present. Insomnia or bad quality of sleep, somatization, diffusing somatization. With behavioral or subjective manifestation, going to hypersomnia versus decreased need of sleep, I introvert self absorption with uninhibited people seeking. Tachy turn versus tactative, um, psychomotor inertia versus restless pulsuit activities, and also lethargy versus eutonia, dull lingual sense versus keen perception, slow witted versus sharp at the thinking, pessimistic versus optimistic. The softy instable temperament, as I talked before, is a soft psychothemic temperament. Characterized by vague fluctuating uneasiness, mood instability, but of a low grade, anxious trait. This is the subgroup that several colleagues are depicting as anxious temperament. But because the anxious temperament present always instability, in my experience, is a subgroup of a cyclotemic irritable temperament. But is a softly subgroup. When it develops to up threshold form of a bipolar disorder, this presents a beta prognosis that cyclotemic temperament development. 
Also, Professor Akiska and Rimer described this important sentence to remark the importance of the temperament, to early catch the temperament. Let's read together. Premorbid affective temperament types have important role in the clinical evolution of minor and major mood episodes, including the direction of the polarity and the symptom formation of acute mood episode. They also significantly affect the long-term cause and outcome, including suicidality and other forms of self-destructive behavior, such as substance abuse and eating disorder. The symptoms. These are the symptoms we can find in mixed states, two or more of these. The symptoms is important to catch very, very well, very fine and very together. The person moved together with irritability, antisocial behavior, substance abuse, disorder of appetite, a sense of despair and suicidal ideation, anhedonia and widespread apathy, reduced ability to concentrate and mental overactivity, hyper or hyposexual activity, insomnia or fragmented sleep, comorbidity with anxiety disorder, panic, internalized OCD, social phobia gastrointestinal disorder, EDASH, and various somatization symptoms, colitis, gastritis, diffuse and muscle tension. This somatization are very, very frequent. The notion of the mixity, what's the mixity? The, the mixity is a dynamic notion describing the presence of overlapping symptoms of mixed states in an increasing intensity level. Let's think of a car. For example, with this accelerator and tachometer, by accelerating, we increase the power of the engine. No, it's not the power that the engine admits, and the tachometer rises. At the same time, our, our car, the intensity of the level of the mixity symptoms is the intensity of the level of the illness. So that it's important to early catch the level of the intensity. And this can, we can find with a ready scale I created some years ago and then published in 2014. I shall present it later. The dysphoric component of a mood is quite more frequent, very frequent. Approximately, it includes 30%, between 30 40% of mood disorder of a spectrum. However, they are pathologies which are often underestimated or worse, not diagnosed or bad treated or inappropriately treated. Why this? Because clinicians find great difficulties, find great difficulties in making a correct diagnosis of a mood disorder in states, because the patient mainly focus their own symptoms on depressive uneasiness, inducing the clinician to frequently prescribe antidepressant. I feel bad, I feel depressed, I feel uh, with up, down, more down than up um, of mood. And then the clinician go, uh, goes to error. Going to frequently prescribe antidepressants uh, alone or together Worse with benzodiazepine, this inadequate treatment induces the dysphoria. This is the worst symptoms of the bipolarity. Also, Professor Akiskal talked about uh, of mixity. He invented the mixity word. I not I did, I did not. Hey, Akiskal presented this slide in Iseo in 2009, describing the mixed of depressive phase. They are the most insidious symptoms of overlap, depression, restlessness, and irritability together can cause increased risk of suicidality. And you can see in this slide of Akiskal, the presence in of the comorbidity with anxiety of panic, the agitation and restlessness, the irritability and aggression, the activated depression, there's some phases of recovering from depression is the worst moment of the patient when there is also with irritability and aggression and restlessness. The intensity, as I told before, of this symptom can be shown using the rating scale for Mrs. State, GTMS-RAS, 
uh, simply rating scale to um, administer to the patient in 11 items with also seven sub items to demonstrate the level of the mixity. We can file from two to 19 score, divided in three subgroup, medium, light, medium, and high level of a score of intensity of residuals. This rating scale, that is, we know, translated also in Russia, into Russian language. I, I invite all colleagues to use it and give me your feedback following your experience. The presence of a new rating scale for mixed state is crucial because where there were not other ready scales so focused on mixity and mixity mixed states. The other ready scale were focused on bipolarity, on uh, hypomania, on different modality, but not for the mixed states. This diligence really should enable the clinician to make an early diagnosis of a bipolar mixed state by identifying the mixed symptoms. And consequently, this should enable early prescription of a mood regulator drug so to optimize the treatment. I show the this here in English, but I repeat, uh, Professor Darius Minova has the Russian version. The motto of the clinician, I am a clinician, I'm not a researcher, my life is to do the clinician since more than 25 years. And the motto is, must be a correct treatment follows to a correct diagnosis. This is must be. Very often, I repeat, an in inadequate treatment to use long time benzodiazepine or antidepressant alone causes an increase in instability and the development of the impatient of the dysphoric mixed states. So that the bipolar disorder treatment will require spatial care, spatial care, a combination therapy between the moon regulators and the low doses of antidepressant, more moon regulator than antidepressant. I described some name of moon regulators, lithium we know, but above all, Carbamazepine, Bartrate, Gabapentin, Oxcarbazepine, Lemotrogine, Topiramate, Olanzapine, Asenapine, Loxapine, and the Pipamperon, an ancient new, at the same time, more regulator. The first of the atypical neuroleptics. And between the antidepressant, I suggest prevalently SSRI and SNRI. I repeat again to my clinical colleagues, never using antidepressant alone or in combination with benzodiazepine and never use a long time benzodiazepine, both in order to avoid an increase in instability and the development in patients of the dysphoric mixed states. Since many years, I dedicated myself on spreading this clinical concept among psychiatrists. For example, through this interview of mine in my YouTube channel that has more than 42,000 views, the, the translation of the Italian title is to treat depression does not mean to prescribe antidepressant. This is one of the most view, viewed video in the field of bipolarity in Italy. One important observation from the first validation study on the rating scale, the TMS rating scale, the four diagnoses of recurrent depression and major depression immersed in that study scored within the medium level of the GD MSRS, showing how the symptoms of mixity are diffused within all mood disorder, all mood disorder subtypes, not only in the bipolar classic. In consequence of this, the prescription of mood stabilizer together with antidepressant, even in patients with diagnosis of major depression or recurrent depression, begins crucial for a good treatment. Crucial. Also, at Iskal, in a conference in 2006 in Copenhagen, described 
This notion, Malinconia is defined today, is most closely linked with the depressive of mixed phase of a party disorder. So that the practice of treating them when that is present, the monotherapy mm -hmm. needs a re-evaluation. Let's read what Atiska said several years ago. Our final comments, the consequence, in consequence of all I said, in con the consequence of a lack of recognition and the treatment of bipolar disorder can be the reduction in the expectation and the quality of life, the increase in the work working days, the increasing use of healthcare resources, including for concurrent the comorbidity, concurrent disease, the stable boot then can become chronic and the clinical picture can work can get worse and obviously high risk of suicide. Finally, I never get tired or repeat in consequence of this, the instability of the mood more the depression is the main issue with the clinician need to deal in the patient with the mood disorder. The depressive episode is only one phase of a broader bipolar spectrum. So that this final sentence I lack so much. When considering bipolarity, the notion of a mixity becomes the conceptual reference point of a diagnostic process. All this I said, we can find in a book that Mark Edus and myself edited in Cambridge in 2013, the management of a bipolar spectrum disorder with more than 55 chapters. And also, with a handbook for population, we created in the same year a handbook for population of mood disorder translated in 12 languages. Daris Vernova also collaborated with us translating into Russian, but we have 12 European languages in for this handbook free to free download from the website of the European Depression Day. What's the European Depression Day? It's an event that we organize since 18 years in October, every year. And also I repeat that Darius Vinova is collaborating with us since two years. And I invite all other colleagues from Russia to collaborate with her uh, to diffuse in several cities this event because the population need to understand better and more on mood disorder, on depression, on bipolarity. This is the theme of the next uh, European Depression Day, the impact of COVID on depression, because all you know that this has been a very peculiar year, and we'll focus next October on this subject. And finally, I thanks for your attention, showing a picture of the Lake Oviseo, where our association is incorporated. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, dear Professor Giuseppe Tovarmina. I would like to say, to express our sincere gratitude for this amazing lecture, and I would like to say and express many thanks for our long-term collaboration already. We are very happy and honored to, to uh, participate in your conferences and uh, in Cambridge and in Europe and now unfortunately online but as the whole world and we are looking forward to meet you in present soon in Cambridge, in Europe, in Italy and we are we would be very happy to um, uh, welcome you in our university in Russia and hope that one day you will come and visit us to Samara State Medical University. Thank you so much. And um, it, it was very interesting that you uh, said and uh, what you said in details about the mixed states. It's a very important topic, yes, and uh, uh, we are thinking about the approbation of Russian version of this mixed state rating scale which you developed and uh, we are thinking also to apply this uh, scale to post-covid patients with affective states and to think about the group of risks 
to develop affective states and to think how mixed uh, states contribute to the severity of affective states associated with post-COVID um, uh, states uh, of um, emotional disturbances in patients. Uh, thank you very much, and we will obligatory um, manage and organize uh, European Depression Day in Russia and join your team. And uh, uh, Associate Professor Alexei Pavlichenko has delivered a lecture during our Depression Day, and uh, we hope that, uh, again, uh, uh, Alexei will join us this year, and it's my pleasure now and honor to introduce uh, Associate Professor Alexei Pavlichenko, who is the senior lecturer in the Education Center, one of the most famous clinics, uh, mental health clinic named after Alexei in uh, Moscow, and the lecture of uh, Associate Professor Alexei Pavlichenko will be devoted to a very important uh, topic of uh, using digital technologies and uh, modern technologies in, in uh, psychiatry. So, Alexei, you're welcome to the stage. Please uh, unmute your microphone. Daria, can you see my screen? Yes, we see your screen. Just you need to uh, use this op also option. F F F five, yeah. F five. It's okay. Um, still, yes. Now it's perfect. Perfect. The whole screen. Yes. Thank you. Can I start? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Daria, for kind introduction. Also, we are uh, using the the Depetavarmina mixed state. Uh, a scale in our work. Uh, now we are working at biological markers of depression, and also we, we, we have started to use uh, this uh, digital instrument. Yes, and we will co collaborate with Daria to validate this test. Uh, today I'm going to talk about modern technology uh, in context firstly of uh, affective disorder, including bipolar disorder, and uh, before. The artificial intelligence, machine learning, very shortly, uh, which help us to diagnose and manage uh, mental, the severe mental disorder, and, uh, affective uh, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia, and other disorder, where uh, AI and apps are also quite uh, popular and becoming more and more popular. Today, we are living in the era where uh, most of the population in America, about 80 85 percent of the population, have a very powerful computer in their pockets and in mobile phones. And even in the poorest countries in Africa, where people can have uh, problems in assessing water and electricity, they can have uh, mobile phones. And it would be quite reasonable to use the mobile phones and uh, also. You know, uh, machine learning, especially in developed countries, rather in developing countries, which help us uh, to uh, treat uh, and diagnose mental disorder uh, uh, in general. But uh, firstly, I would like to speak uh, which problems uh, we as psychiatrists are facing while diagnosing um, uh, psychiatric disorders. Uh, before the SM3, uh, uh, psychiatry traditionally has offered clinical insight into uh, observation, behavioral observations, and study of emotions and cognitions. Then uh, we, uh, after DSM-3 uh, was launched in 1980, uh, we uh, were focused on uh, very uh, strict criteria of mental disorders, including affective disorders. Uh, now we, uh, we used uh, DSM-5 for about eight years, and we are about to uh, start using ICD-11 uh, in a year, and um, problems which we are facing, as I mentioned, are quite big, uh, as the slide uh, shows us problems which, according to Alan Francis, uh, uh, before uh, DSM-5 was launched eight years ago, eight years ago uh, he, uh, he uh, represented these uh, problems, uh, DSM-5 just a, a dictionary which creates labels and divides them itself. And uh, 
DSM and the SAT in general classification is just has become a surrogate for behavioral observations. And uh, we have to focus on specific symptoms and uh, uh, we sometimes we don't know what uh, happened beyond uh, uh, the problems which we are facing in our room, uh, in, our, in our clinic. Uh, and uh, uh, lack of validity also, the problem of the SM5, et cetera, et cetera. And also we have to uh, uh, mention very interesting work of Dan Banos before also, uh, the DSM-5 was introduced uh, and in his work, which he called precise and diagnose for psychiatry, uh, he used so-called complex uh, uh, diagnosis uh, and afterwards the different uh, modern apps also uh, followed this uh, idea uh, to use uh, to use computer to use a smartphone and uh, a patient a client uh, uh, may um, get uh, 10 10 times per day uh, sms uh, uh, with uh, questions to uh, understand to, to assess uh, uh, her his uh, mental state, anxiety, uh, being paranoid, uh, happy, low mood, etc., and uh, which context they happened, in, for example, in context of stress company after taking medicines, etc., etc., and uh, also we can uh, uh, understand so the influence between symptoms uh, in, in the context of different situations, and of course, uh, using this instrument so called uh, context. Uh, Precise in diagnosis by Vanos, we can understand much better what happened beyond our beyond our room auditorium, uh, and uh, it would be very relevant uh, to manage our patients. And in, in this uh, case, uh, patients uh, is not uh, uh, is a part of our uh, our team together with uh, doctors or with psychologists because we we together we can understand better. Uh, different factors which contribute to our condition. Uh, and uh, the last year, Maria Mai and uh, other prominent professors published a very interesting paper regarding precise diagnosis in depression. And the last uh, issue of uh, both psychiatry have published uh, uh, problems uh, uh, which were in context of schizophrenia and psychotic disorder. And according to Maria Mai and other professors, uh, when we are uh, when we are facing with depressive uh, patients, we need to think not just only about symptoms, not about subtypes of uh, of depression, but other other parts uh, of uh, this of this uh, uh, domains are very important, and it would be quite difficult to assess uh, all these topics, uh, personality traits. Uh, the previous lecture, Josepka uh, was telling me about. Temperament, uh, the background for bipolar disorder, uh, protective factors, resilience, cognitive schemes, and most of these uh, uh, domains and some of these domains are would be quite difficult to assess just only just only using DSM four, uh, DSM five, sorry, ICD uh, eleven, and also um, different questionnaires and scales of which uh, which may ask which may tell us just only. Uh, information, just very low information, not all information about the patients. That's why we need to use additional instruments and artificial intelligence and uh, mobile apps are the one most popular instrument to help us to understand better different domains of depressions, not only depressions, but by disease, etc. Also, we need to uh, understand, we need to remember being in clinicians that in depression are different from our point of view, the clinicians, there are different uh, perspective uh, uh, of uh, patients and different perspective of researchers, and they, they are not the same. Yes, and when we, what should, uh, uh, when we are thinking as the clinicians, we are thinking it's only about only our way, uh, way. But uh, it's, uh, it's researchers and uh, patients are the difference. And uh, it would be just two years ago, it uh, was published a very interesting study uh, of, uh, of German psychiatrists uh, in collaboration with other psychiatrists from different countries, which um, from uh, Brazil, Canada, Mexico, Korea, USA, USA, France, Italy, also may, may, um, some of them, our Italy colleague, uh, 
colleagues participated in this very interesting online survey, uh, survey uh, which includes uh, uh, patients, uh, more than 2,000 patients, and uh, healthcare professionals, psychologists, psychiatrists, and uh, neurologists, uh, which are facing with depressed uh, patients, uh, more than uh, 1,000 uh, professionals. Uh, and they asked to fill in the, uh, the questionnaire. Uh, uh, and uh, also, and uh, according to the survey, a very interesting online survey, um, we can see that their uh, view on depression uh, uh, and view on the aims of treatment must be very different from the psychiatrist or uh, uh, healthcare professional perspective and patient perspective. Firstly, uh, 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 there are big uh, difference, uh, statistically, a uh, meaning a uh, difference between uh, Psychiatrists and psychology professionals, uh, specialists in general, underestimate the symptoms of all three phases of depression during remission. We can see also the, uh, there are big difference between patients and professionals in assessing forgetfulness, uh, the very uh, important cognitive domain which can predict uh, outcomes of depressions. And uh, we have to focus uh, much more uh, uh, on uh, this cognitive impairment as a part of our uh, management of our, um, uh, of our plan uh, in, in, in treating and managing as, uh, the cognitive uh, managing depressive patients. Uh, or, uh, regarding, uh, regarding social functioning, a very interesting uh, test uh, passed, which was proposed by Professor Vieta and his team from Barcelona. Uh, which uh, uh, assess different domains of, of functioning, cognitive functioning, uh, labor, leisure, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, for functioning uh, domains, uh, the difference in uh, scores in functional, uh, in functional fun in fun functioning uh, uh, scores were greatest in the post acute phase uh, for the for cognitive uh, functioning uh, in patients and professional cohort and in the in remission uh, phase for the uh, cognitive functioning domain. We can see that uh, cognitive uh, domain is the most differentiation domain in comparison in assessing by uh, patients and professionals. Uh, uh, also, we can see this, this slide and we can keep in mind while uh, treating patients with uh, depression. Uh, 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 the difference are quite important in other symptoms, uh, affective symptoms, uh, somatic symptoms, uh, cognitive symptoms are more important. Uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in also in, in, in treatment. Uh, a cognition uh, of the very popular slide which is in different conferences, uh, which we see that there are different uh, uh, aims which uh, contribute a lot uh, as uh, protective factors, or as resilient factors, or factors that can contribute uh, uh, for developing of uh, a depressive, uh, uh, depressive states. From a uh, lifelong, uh, from life perspective, uh, from uh, before, before birth uh, and the early age, adolescent periods, and uh, adults, and retirement, different factors can contribute as a protective and pro and pro in, in favor of, of having uh, depression. Uh, uh, also, uh, today uh, we uh, we are focusing not only uh, about only on uh, scales uh, which are quite popular uh, about quite old in Gamilton scale on um, uh, iceberg and other scales and today uh, also need to uh, to assess uh, our patients not uh, only by the ourselves as clinicians but also we have to uh, to propose them the own the, the self uh, self questionnaires and uh, cobra one of the instruments which help us to uh, to assess these cognitive complaints. Uh, and uh, negative symptoms are another example. Uh, 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 since uh, Kaplan time, uh, Bloller time, uh, being clinicians, we suggested that negative symptoms are the uh, basic symptoms of schizophrenia, but and only we as clinicians can assess them better than, uh, than anything else in the, in the, in the publicity. In, 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 in public, uh, generally speaking, and our patients can uh, assess better. Uh, but according to the 
some instruments, this instrument and other instrument also can uh, tell us that uh, patients can assess, can estimate the conditions not um, uh, not, ba not bad, uh, and, uh, and we should also we, can, we even in assessing negative symptoms we have uh, to um, uh, think about uh, patients' attitudes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, what uh, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, can help us to diagnose and treat their mental disorders? Today, uh, Food and Drug Administration approved just only two biomarkers. Uh, uh, in uh, which helped clinicians to manage uh, uh, a treatment plan uh, for patients uh, uh, test uh, uh, FDA approved uh, a genetic test for analyzing DNA uh, extracted from uh, saliva by a person herself and informing the patient that he has mutations, certain genes that are associated with the ability to mobilize certain drugs. And also uh, another test, uh, carbamazepine, before starting carbamazepine, uh, people of uh, Asian origin are advised to have a genetic test to avoid serious skin reaction. Uh, the pharmac I, I am not going to talk about genetics, it's not uh, 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 my topic today, but uh, uh, unfortunately, just only two tests we can uh, used in our routine practice. Other tests, which even in Russia, uh, myself sometimes when I'm using uh, for my genetic tests to help me to, uh, to understand better which antidepressants and antipsychotic I have to prescribe my patients after two uh, fails, uh, for example. And uh, let's say uh, results, or make my own, my own opinion, it's quite contradictory. Sometimes it helps me, sometimes no. Uh, Today, all these tests are, uh, are, are future rather than um, also biomarkers. Uh, there are different uh, biomarkers, uh, clinical biomarkers, imaging, genetic, epigenetic, other uh, biomarkers uh, which maybe in the near future can help, can help us to treat a better um, patient, our patients. But today, unfortunately, it's in, in the work, in the, uh, in the progression of, uh, of, 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 of using this uh, test uh, in clinical practice, uh, uh, even for um, uh, depression disorder. Uh, in other fields, uh, first in cardiology, uh, in uh, medicine, uh, general medicine, uh, FDA and some other regulatory, regulatory organs in America, they approved some tests. Uh, uh, for example, machine uh, learning can, uh, can uh, screen, uh, retina, can have uh, retinal scans to predict heart disease, uh, analyzing blood vessels in the back of the eye to predict the risk factors. Uh, and uh, it help us to predict uh, a heart attack, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, uh, but uh, in psychiatry, uh, we just only have few uh, articles uh, regarding the use of artificial intellect as uh, a uh, predictive uh, instrument. Uh, uh, some disorders also in this uh, uh, articles. Uh, we also, when we use, uh, uh, when we scan retinal arterias, uh, which may uh, risk some. Uh, some relationship between uh, cerebral vascularity uh, and uh, fibrocinesis. Um, it must be it must be a marker of schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, but it's not uh, the uh, it's not uh, now. It's also it's the future, uh, but it's more important uh, to uh, use uh, a different app, uh, 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 which we can download from uh, Apple Store, Google. Uh, from Google uh, uh, Play, uh, uh, which uh, detect, uh, for example, uh, uh, arterial fibrillation using built-in technology. I'm talking about general medicine uh, and uh, actigraphy, which uh, uh, during all the day it scan our movement and there are professional uh, uh, professional devices. Uh, which can help us to understand better the phase of sleep, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, professional device, like I'm using this, uh, uh, this device, 
and it helped me to understand better my 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 sleep and um, uh, sleeping uh, a lot uh, after uh, each night of which uh, we can do, do I need uh, to medicine do I correct something in my diet uh, something uh, in, uh, in for example what cups of coffee I need to uh, to drink uh, to, to improve my my uh, my sleep uh, without uh, without taking medicine etc etc and uh, a lot of different uh, devices today uh, and uh, it's very interesting article from this year ago which uh, where machine learning uh, classifier of spoken language can reliably identify current or lifetime history of suicidality depression with speaking of epilepsy and just only few uh, few uh, articles we can find. Uh, and also today, uh, I know that um, a lot of uh, psychiatrists researchers are working hard uh, on using artificial in, uh, intellect, uh, intelligence in predicting uh, so the mental disorder just some months ago. Uh, Popovich talked us a lot about his, uh, his her, her work, uh, her work with her team in Israel, uh, which uh, uh, she not published this this uh, this article about using uh, uh, voice uh, 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 speech um, uh, to predict uh, psychosis. I know that Darius Vernon also is a big expert in in, uh, in linguistic, and it's also a very intriguing uh, area uh, in psychiatry. And in the near future, it may help us to diagnose uh, uh, psychiatric conditions. Uh, about mobile apps, even now, if, for example, we uh, we have uh, we, we wrote uh, we, we, we write a depression diagnosis test, uh, as uh, we can uh, have this link, uh, and uh, uh, persons uh, will uh, uh, propose will propose to use a very popular EHQ nine test uh, and self help test. Uh, which uh, uh, can help you decide what to do. And if you have, for example, more than uh, mild depression or severe depression, more than uh, nine uh, uh, scores on this test, so you will be delivered to the specific uh, specific um, telephone. In America, unfortunately, uh, we don't have this uh, sort of instrument here in Russia, but I think it's, uh, uh, it's uh, in the future we will have the same. Uh, but before using um, uh, mobile apps, uh, in firstly, since Krepelin, because Krepelin in his uh, routine work, uh, he and his colleague used different uh, charts uh, to understand better um, uh, of, uh, of his patients, uh, long moves and elevated and weighted mood, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, today in America, in in Great Britain, there are different uh, charts. Um, uh, I know that uh, Guy Goodwin is a professor of the uh, University of Oxford. Also, he looked uh, hardly on using these charts, which help to understand better uh, the uh, level of uh, severity of depression uh, or mood, uh, uh, depression, uh, effect, mood, uh, anxiety, irritability, also, which can help us to understand better uh, whether we are facing a mixed state, as Dr. Tavarmida uh, told before, or must be something else. But unfortunately, it's quite uh, important. But uh, today, it's not easy to our patients to use these charts uh, uh, and uh, different charts. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, because all of us, uh, most, most of maybe all of our, our patients are using mobile uh, phones, it's better to use uh, uh, apps rather than uh, to, to draw any, uh, each, each day uh, to assess uh, the uh, conditions by uh, having mark uh, on this chart. Uh, it's, it's good, but it's, let's say, it's quite old-fashioned. And uh, we're talking about uh, digital era today, uh, which uh, uh, includes mobile health, uh, including mobile apps, uh, uh, which can be active uh, where patients are part of, uh, of this um, process. Uh, and uh, he helps uh, the clinicians to understand better by giving information about the mood, uh, 
about the contact, etc. Uh, there are different uh, parts of uh, mobile health, good self-rating um, uh, when they're using uh, mobile apps, uh, diary apps, uh, which uh, use contacts uh, and wellness apps, which uh, help uh, the clients to uh, understand that uh, by sending them uh, some messages that you should do, for example, physical exercises, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, health information technology, uh, telehealth. Even now we're using telehealth, the telemedicine. It's a part of our uh, routine uh, practice, uh, uh, even in Russia, uh, and it's quite acceptable for patients and in our country, one country. Uh, telemedicine, it's a part of our life. And of course, there are variable medical devices. Uh, there are some advantages and the disadvantages of mental health uh, apps. Mental health apps. Uh, firstly, uh, it can be easily uh, adopted uh, for most of people uh, 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 which prefer to use uh, uh, computer and apps rather than uh, visit psychiatrists uh, in the uh, some apps can get a uh, better without any help from the user. Uh, for example, uh, information from a large number of individuals uh, and uh, help also to understand that, uh, what's wrong with the patients. Uh, uh, some, uh, most, not all, but some uh, apps are cost free. Uh, and, uh, uh, technology can offer treatment for patients in different areas. It's also quite relevant for Russia. Uh, uh, and, uh, for poor countries also, for developing countries, uh, or uh, also individuals in terms of intensive needs. Uh, this technology can provide 24 hours monitoring and intervention support can come from non-human therapy. Uh, but firstly, the main uh, issue when we're talking about mobile apps, uh, mobile apps are uh, the privacy. Uh, and apps manage sensitive personal data. And uh, some, uh, some people can have this information uh, and they can uh, know you better than yourself, uh, and they can have these informations in, in different uh, different, uh, different uh, areas, especially in other countries, South Korea, for example, in other countries, and um, uh, where mental apps offer the same treatment program to all users. But also, uh, we know that patients are quite different from each other, uh, and. Uh, it's, uh, it's not uh, the case to use the same uh, programs, same piece of advice for all patients. And of course, we have low uh, uh, the lack of or low evidence uh, of, of effectiveness of the apps. Uh, later, I will focus on just on some apps which will be validated in different countries. And uh, before I was talking about about cognitive uh, impairment as a part of um, the part of uh, 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 the part of depression and the difference between clinicians and mental health professionals, and think it's it's a very interesting tool uh, by um, uh, by uh, created by uh, by Mood Disorder Society, uh, uh, Professor McIntyre from Toronto and his talks, which consists of, uh, of tests and us and also. Uh, 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 questionnaire and tests uh, which uh, assess uh, different uh, function, executive function, um, um, attention, uh, working memory, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And after maybe 15 years, 15 minutes later, you as a doctor can see instruments which help you to understand better the level of functional cognitive impairment, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and, and help you to, uh, to use. Uh, uh, good uh, treatment work plan. Uh, today, it's an uh, uh, overview of uh, Hidalgo Maze from, from the team of, uh, of Vita from, from Barcelona. And in his review, uh, he uh, for him, there are only four or five, or much more, maybe now they have this uh, more than 10 uh, instruments, uh, uh, which uh, uh, can help you to improve symptoms. Uh, which can help you to to prevent relapse, uh, which can help you to detect and predict mood changes, and uh, most of these tests are quite feasible, uh, and there are some 
international trial, trials uh, of these tasks. Uh, and today, uh, just a very interesting example of this uh, app, so-called uh, uh, simple uh, projects, uh, self-monitor and psychoeducation in bipolar patients uh, with the smartphone applications. Um, uh, it is very highly available and user-friendly and not costly monitoring. Uh, for, uh, maybe three years ago, it was translated into English from Spain, and unfortunately, we don't have translation of the app uh, in Russian. And uh, this app uh, uh, gathers information during or during the day, uh, also about uh, about uh, uh, context, uh, um, about testing the mood, uh, also and they are doing according uh, uh, to this information. Uh, uh, a uh, peer person can uh, get the, an, an, an SMS uh, from uh, from this app, uh, which uh, uh, says that you need to do exercises if uh, or you have a very high level of uh, uh, suicide risk. Uh, or for example, a uh, simple uh, uh, app can improve biological uh, rhythms in the uh, disorder because they can use so-called brain. Uh, brain means uh, 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 rhythms, biological uh, rhythms interview uh, of assessing the neuropsychiatry uh, and uh, uh, eating pattern, predominant rhythm, social rhythm, activity, sleeps, and uh, according to the data, they give you information uh, about what should we do. Uh, and it has positive effect on psychoeducation. Uh, and, uh, and using this uh, app during three months, uh, it may help you to improve your sleep, improve your uh, habits in general, and also it can remind you the need to take lithium, for example, so three, three times a day, and you need to have the right to give a test uh, on lithium. Uh, and uh, of course, it is more reasonable than using psychoeducation because only uh, because. Uh, Many countries, in Russia, we here in Moscow, we have just only some teams which are specialized in recommendation in bipolar disorder, and maybe using such uh, smartphone app, uh, apps can uh, can have uh, can can improve your uh, improve your uh, different domains which are quite important for functionality uh, without. Uh, uh, and uh, if we, in conclusion, if we are talking about mobile mental health, uh, uh, which, which includes information from uh, from apps, uh, from, uh, from your smartphone, can also uh, can analyze not only uh, your let's say your sleep, uh, uh, let's say your distance, your number of your calls. But also, they can assess uh, your voice, the tempo of your voice. Uh, if you are talkative, if you, if you are very talkative for example, uh, if you touch your screen uh, with a very hot, uh, and it might be, uh, let's say, as a trigger for, uh, it may uh, trigger for uh, 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 risk of psychosis. Of Depressions or mania, and the uh, issue that what should we do? Uh, 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 Mood uh, diary also trackers, which now translated into Russian, and you can download in Google Play. It's not quite uh, big, uh, not quite maybe informative, but a simple app. Uh, it helps also uh, to assess the mood and context mm -hmm. and give you a message. Uh, a mood enhancing app uh, without therapist. It's let's say uh, we also we can uh, have it here in uh, translated into Russians. It's based on the cognitive uh, behavioral therapy uh, and includes CBT uh, techniques. Uh, and uh, for example, uh, we can add that uh, uh, message uh, which help you to understand better your own condition. And so years ago, it was uh, uh, launched by. Uh, Union uh, of, of I think, uh, let's say, I don't remember the name of this organization. Oh, yes, uh, the Union of Mental Health. Uh, and Natalia Kriushnikova is the leader of this um, organization, very uh, important organization, uh, which uh, also proposed.
some uh, apps uh, for uh, for treating for managing depression, uh, uh, so anti-depression, uh, um, anti uh, anti depressia uh, app. Uh, it should be it should easily download from a Google app, and also uh, you can focus in on your thinking. You can focus in what should you do, for example. You can uh, advise you to, to, for example, to go to, to drink a, a, a wine, champagne. If you need to uh, to touch something, you need to go outside, etc., etc. Regarding information that you get, uh, and also when we are talking, for example, about uh, about seasonality, uh, we have to clarify some very important issues. Uh, how can, for example, can apps uh, be connected um, uh, to a large system when active suicide risk suddenly increases? What should we do? It's, bit, it's not easy to balance between privacy on the hand and, on the hand and uh, our um, uh, psychiatrists who should do something which we know that the risk is quite high according to information which we get from apps. Uh, can uh, mental health uh, Derived patient that's been integrated into the algorithm leading patient to crisis management services and other urgent care resources. Uh, also, in the generally speaking, uh, the big gap uh, when we're talking about um, uh, apps uh, between uh, privacy and uh, and our, uh, and our work as psychiatrists. Um, uh, and also, in the last uh, slide, we came, it's my uh, also my maybe very popular, my favorite uh, trainer, uh, which can uh, use uh, people. And I'm a user of this uh, app for, for about 10 months. And I know that uh, following this, uh, this test, very, very simple test, uh, I can improve my, uh, uh, my social care skills. Uh, Sleep, etc., etc. It is, uh, let's say, it's very important when you use, uh, when you are, uh, uh, when you've been a doctor and you recommend to use uh, some mobile apps to patients, you need to understand better them. Not all of them, but some of them. We can, for example, anti depressia, uh, simple uh, uh, mobile apps. Uh, before you, you, you need to understand better uh, what you, you have to wait from your patient, from the clients. Yes, but. Uh, Maybe also uh, when we are uh, generally speaking, when, uh, when people are uh, creating these apps, they need information from patients, from clients, and uh, clients and patients must be a part of team because only them can understand better how patients with suicidal ideations think, uh, what uh, they think after suicidal attempts, and uh, uh, doctors, uh, patients. Uh, caregivers must be the part of these teams while we create in mobile apps. It's also uh, just uh, published uh, uh, published an article two years, two years ago about uh, requirement for uh, for creating uh, mobile apps and how can we integrate uh, different uh, data, uh, big data, internet-based, uh, firstly information from, from computing, from smartphone, from devices, genetic information and clinical observation, of course, by markers, and also it's a part of our uh, big uh, diagnosis, which is called precise medicine, precise diagnosis, and also combining all these parts so we can uh, understand better and so we can uh, uh, create better plan for our patients. And the last slide at the proposal of the president, the previous president of information into mental health now uh, he's uh, working in the industry and uh, so-called digital phenotyping uh, which involves uh, collecting sensor keyboard voice speech data from smartphone uh, uh, to measure behavior cognition and mood and uh, digital phenotyping could become a potential path to measurement of uh, care allowing care managers to monitor contribution and relapse potentially Printing emergency department within the organization. Also, as I mentioned before, privacy uh, and this uh, must be the big issue in uh, in um, uh, using these uh, information in practice. 
uh, but also for, for coaches, uh, psychiatry. Uh, it's uh, nowadays uh, it's a part of our life, and uh, uh, and in the near future, uh, as uh, your late uh, Italian psychiatry Alessandro Savetti published uh, the present and future precise medicine psychiatry two years ago. The future will be based on biological determinants. However, until such an interesting but still futuristic aim will be reached at present, we may only rely on clinical feature to guide our individualized prescri prescription, which is currently still uh, frequently based on personal opinion and subjective previous experience. But uh, luckily, some other apps can help understand better uh, our, our patients. And so to, become, to conclude, uh, patient and physical uh, perspective on the cognitions, goals of therapy and prognosis can be greatly. There are no reproductive clinical use of biomarkers in psychiatry, but only two, maybe, which are which is important in context of uh, pharmacology. Uh, the potential of digital technology in psychiatry has awakened many hopes, but despite encouraging the results, research in this area is too early to be applied in real practice. Uh, computerized psychiatry is a valuable field that needs to be further explored, and also artificial intelligence is likely to change. Uh, 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 psychiatry, as we know, it, it is uh, now it is changing. Uh, psychiatry, and uh, maybe in, in ten years period, we will live in a different reality than we live now. Thank you, uh, dear Alexey. Thank you very much. It's really impressive uh, lecture on we really made step in a new era and yes we're expecting what will happen in 10 years as you say regarding digital mental health and artific artificial intelligence which will guide us another way perhaps and uh, it's a great collaboration with the union of mental health and uh, natalia triushnikova who really um, does a great job on these digital mental health technologies and uh, I would like to ask uh, maybe one question about the security of services um, of uh, te telepsychiatry of this services of uh, uh, the security the security of uh, services how can we provide the security when we use uh, applications or uh, telepsychiatry. So we are um, talking about some secure IT services, servers, or are we opening all the data about mental health state of <laughs> the population? Uh, what can what can I say? Uh, it is most one uh, one interesting and challenging issue as you better uh, ask uh, even maybe uh, today FDA doesn't approve any apps in psychiatry uh, and uh, there are some uh, some um, uh, they approved in cardiology but not in psychiatry and also they are using a lot about uh, security I don't know I don't know how to answer your questions because uh, we need to uh, to to, to save uh, uh, our information from our patients. But on the other hand, uh, when we're using telephone, okay. uh, most of us are using uh, Chinese telephones, yes. And uh, as you know that uh, um, uh, American Donald Trump, uh, um, half a year, maybe one year ago, uh, he, uh, he banned uh, Huawei uh, that because they collect information about Americans and they can use uh, in different uh, from different uh, in different ways, and uh, we don't know exactly. Uh, we know only that, that it's uh, uh, it's it's uh, a part of our life, and uh, our smartphone are gathering information all the time. Yes, and uh, how they use this information, yeah. and uh, maybe if uh, maybe. And I don't, I don't know how to answer, but it's yeah, most important. Actually, we also know. <laughs> someone else, someone, someone else know, uh, knows about uh, the ways of uh, safe information from our patients. Yes, yeah, so, mm, maybe it's one of the biggest limitation to uh, to share these uh, apps uh, 
um, uh, but Tom agents and not only doctors and caregivers know a lot about patients, yeah. but everyone else can have your information and, and uh, share information. It's uh, personal data, it's uh, conditions, it's your, um, how do you sleep? Uh, for example, if, if we use this um, data in business, if your business partner they can uh, know this information. Okay. Yeah. Very dangerous, very dangerous. Yes, very dangerous, but as you say, it's a part of our life. We are very open now and very fragile, actually, because we open much information while using uh, these uh, digital technologies. But of course, there are some cross points um, regarding security of data and ethics in psychiatry. But uh, what can we do? Actually, uh, as you said, uh, that you showed on one of your slides, uh, there are advantages and disadvantages of everything and digital uh, mental health technologies uh, as well. Uh, but if to integrate what we uh, have been discussing today, maybe we could uh, uh, think about uh, some uh, application about mixed states. <laughs> yes. And and maybe we can have uh, develop some collaboration with you and Professor Giuseppe Tavarmina. Uh, and uh, as uh, Giuseppe have so, so much information uh, and contacts in Europe and have their literature, education, literature in um, many languages. So we can also develop some uh, education, at least education, mental health technologies and maybe measuring mixed states if we go into this uh, field and um, maybe in collaboration with uh, uh, Natalia uh, Trigushnikova we can arrange some project. Uh, uh, thank you very much. We are very impressed by both of the lectures and uh, uh, we will um, if you don't mind, if you agree, we then share all this information via YouTube uh, channel of our university uh, for the audience of students, doctors, uh, researchers, and uh, really um, we hope for future collaboration with you, Professor Giuseppe Tavarmini, and you, Associate Professor Alexei Kovachenko. Th thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, all you. Thank you, thank you, thank you Daria. Yes, yes. So I continue our day. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Keep in touch. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.